Off to port here we have uh, Grenadier Island, uh, which I assume was named after British uh, grenadiers during the War of uh, 1812. Uh, almost all the Thousand Islands uh, on the Canadian side have some kind of, uh, their names have some kind of relevance or connection to the War of 1812 because this was a uh, hotbed of action during the wa War of 1812. Off to port, port right now you can see Slim Island and the East, or sorry, Central Grenadier Anchorage and uh, docks. So you just have to dodge those islands, dodge a bunch of rocks, drag your keel through some mud and you're there. Easy. Well. Here we are, fourth dock in, in Grenadier Central. Uh, we had to kind of plow our way in. We're in uh, about four feet ten inches of water, and we draw four feet ten inches. So we had to plow through some mud to get in. So hopefully getting out is not too big of a hassle, but it's a super nice, super nice dock. Uh, I don't think this particular dock has seen a 35 foot boat in a while since the dock's only about 15 feet long. And we're doing up some potatoes on the alcohol stove. We're cooking outside because uh, we don't want to get it too hot inside. So here we are, first morning. This is uh, Grenadier Island, Central Anchorage. As you can see, the dock is a little bit short for our boat. And the water's a little bit shallow too because we are sitting in bottom. We had to plow our way through the mud to get in. Tight dock. And here is the anchorage and beach. We elected to go with the uh, with the dock, even though it's about thirty dollars a night for our thirty-five foot boat because we've got <coughs> the dog. And uh, it's a lot easier to get them on and off to pee with a dock than uh, than using the dinghy. Uh, quite a few boats at the anchorage. Uh, three sailboats. Uh, last night this uh, this beach was just packed full of teens and twenty-somethings uh, with the music thumping, partying. Uh, you know they're all swimming from beach to beach. Probably twenty boats. Uh, you know kids in bikinis and and. Uh, you know, it was a little bit obnoxious, but they were having fun, so. Here's something to have an eye out for throughout the Thousand Islands. Poison Ivy. Leaves of three. <clears throat> so they're the woody guys. Woody stemmed ones, so that's Poison Ivy right there. Okay. Here's the anchorage from another angle. Okay, so we've decided to go for a walking trip to explore the schoolhouse and the Massey Farmstead. I think it's going to be about a seven kilometer round trip. It's a big island. And uh, so I've grabbed some bottles of water, some granola bars, some pears, my camera. Let's go for a walk. Wild grapes along the trail. Historic, would you say? Oh, cool. Pretty cool looking grasses here along the trail. Grasses and ferns. Here are the crickets. Nice trail. And in Parks Canada style, you can drive a 4x4 down it if you had to. Beautiful swamp or wetland in the early morning light. So this walk takes us 0.7 kilometers to the schoolhouse and then another 
2.9 kilometers to the Massey Farmstead. Here we go, we've uh, found the first thing we were searching for, the abandoned schoolhouse. Kind of a commemorative plaque and there's the schoolhouse. Hmm. I was I was expecting more than a tar paper shack. Nineteen sixty three, eh? I think I gotta do more filming in the uh, early morning light because look at all these spider webs. Spider webs and the dew on the grass. Look at this one here. There's a spider web. See that, Oliver? That's where spiders live. It's a spider house. More spider webs. Okay, so here we go. Cemetery, old abandoned cemetery, which is the best kind. Although, one of the other sailors on the dock was telling us that he saw somebody interred here not too many years ago. Yeah, some of these headstones look fairly yeah, new. Yeah. Cool. Well, at least they've got riverfront property to rest at. 1930. Wow, this guy died January 21st, 1920, 81 years old. His wife, 1886, 1964. Died 1910. Man, that headstone's in good shape for 1910. What, do they not get acid rain here? <laughs> James H. Massey, 1853 to 1906. Uh, here, look at these wooden crosses. Warren. Or view of the St. Lawrence from the cemetery, I should say. You can hear the loons. There we go, Sea of Goldenrod. It's a big one. Okay, so I figured I'd demonstrate the problem to you. The problem is, we're in the mud. I mean, we're really in the mud and the weeds. So, what has to happen is we have to back out through all this mud and weeds. And uh, I thought I'd film us doing it. Uh, you want to keep your rudder straight when you're backing through mud because uh, that's how you damage rudders. That's what it looks like. Uh, Mom, if you just want to watch on the starboard side that we don't hit that small power boat there. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Can you just not back out the whole way? So risky backing because uh, it's so easy to damage your rudder.
move him so I can... Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go too far back and wind up in the briar patch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lots of room. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you for your help. Careful with those Turned up a little bit of mud. <laughs> Oh yeah. Remember all that mud we got in there? Yeah. fenders out. Just listen for the autopilot alarm. If it goes off, let me know. So this wind we're getting right now is more seasonal of uh, the Thousand Islands in September. This is more what you would expect to see. The last four days we've been pretty spoiled. Um, and also uh, we've, got, we've got nobody else at dock. One other boat at dock which is also more seasonal. Uh, the last time we were here there were like every dock was taken. And this is our uh, this is our neighbors from two nights ago. On uh, Mulcaster. Grenadier Island, Central. Storm has passed and we have a very, very quiet uh, dock or anchorage. Sunsetting. <laughs> 